How about a quick cup of coffee and a fast five minutes conversation with me? I'll be glad to. Do you know that uh, Leslie and Gail are supposed to drop by the house there to see Monica? Yeah, they're on their way over there now. I just hope the snow lets up a little bit. They're going to have trouble getting back like we are, too. Great! Right. It's been time to help us decorate the tree, Bobby. What are you doing having <laughs> a day off? And then what else? Ben said there's a meeting about the Peter Taylor Memorial Fund in Steve's office later. Are you going to be there? Yeah, his secretary phoned me about it. Listen, the reason that I wanted to talk to you was because of a scene that I just had um, a sister of mine. What's Tracy done this time? It's just a general attitude. I must say, she's a very heavy cross for me to bear. How long she'd be a heavy cross for anyone to bear? She, um, told me that my father... Thanks. She told me that my father is, uh, now hired Zelda Bernstein on a retainer, you know, to be his personal attorney. She's not very happy about that. Well, that is an interesting development, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's a little bit of game playing on the part of my father. Anyway, and so far as I'm concerned, I, I couldn't care less, but, um, Tracy is, um, very upset about it. Anyway, the reason I wanted to talk to you is I would like... I'd like your opinion. What do you think about her as a lawyer? Well, having sat on the opposite side of the table from her in the Corian mess, I, yeah, I don't like her. Yeah. No, I mean, can you offer me an objective judgment on her? Sure, I think I can. She's very capable. I'd say she's a very good attorney. She knows who she is and what she wants. I mean, if you get into the technical legal abilities, I'd say it'd be better to ask Lee or Howard. No, I understand that, huh? Just trying to decide whether my father has made a smart choice or whether he's done this whole thing just to spite Tracy. I don't, I don't think I can answer that. If he did make her that angry, I would say it was a, a bad choice because nobody, absolutely nobody, needs Tracy Quartermain as an adversary, believe me. Well, well, I tell you, if she didn't love my father as much as she did, I'm sure that she would have tried to have, have him declared as being senile for hiring Zelda. Well, that's crazy. I mean. Yes. <laughs> Literally, I know. I mean, the man's never been stronger in his whole life despite his heart attack. I'm just saying, I wouldn't put it past her to try. Why would Tracy object to Zelda being hired by your father? I mean, it doesn't change her financial position in any way, does it? No, it just, it just irritates her, that's all. I don't know. Maybe I'm just borrowing trouble. I would say, from my experience with Zelda, and from what Lee said, she dealt with a great deal of integrity. She would probably uh, do a very fine job for you, Dad. I hope so. I just cannot understand why Tracy is so intent about seeing these depositions. I mean, what could possibly be so personal? Dr. Quartermain, there's a call for you. Thank you. Will you excuse me, Rick? Sure. <clears throat> Dr. Quartermain? Oh, there you are at last. I no, oh, well, Monica was just trying to reach me, according to Tracy, but I uh, just tried and the line was busy. Did Tracy say it was serious? No, nothing like that. I get a little bit uneasy sometimes, leaving her alone in the house, you know, with just Stella there. Well, Mrs. Fields very competent, isn't she? And Gail and Leslie are on their way over there, and they're both highly qualified doctors. I would say that if anything turned up, that they'd be able to handle it very well. Yes, I know. I guess I'm just being a little bit neurotic. Tell me, doctor, do you have a prescription for that? I wish I did, because I would be a millionaire three years ago. <laughs> Honey? Uh, hello, Rick. I think I'm trying to find out if you or Laura have heard anything from Leslie. I'm, I'm a little concerned about her. Uh, no, nothing that I know of. Um, wait a minute. Uh, Laura? Yeah? You heard from your mother at all? No, why? Oh, your dad's on the phone here. Why don't you talk to him? Okay. Dad? Sweetheart, I don't want to worry you. I just wondered if you'd had any late report on your mom. No, no. The last I heard, she and Gail went over to visit Monica. Yeah, I know. I tried to call, but the phone lines are down. I can't find out if she's on her way or, or what. Have you called the house? Yeah, there's no answer there. Oh. I don't know what to tell you. I just hope she isn't out driving around in this weather. Oh, I'm sure she's not doing that. You two going to be staying over there? Uh-huh. We're in for the day. Oh, that's good. I'll be in touch. I I'm here at the hospital, but uh, I can't stay on the phone long. The operator told me that they've got all kinds of emergency calls. All right. Okay. If you hear anything, let me know. I will do that. So long, honey. Bye-bye. Hello. Leslie. Oh. Look, are, are you all right? Oh, yes, my love. I'm just fine. I'm, I'm standing here at Monica's bedside. I have to talk a, a little bit softly. Can you hear me like this? Yeah, but perfectly. Okay, she's in a light sleep, and I don't want to wake her, and I don't want her to hear. But I do want all of you to know what's going on and what we anticipate here. 
All right, shoot, let's hear it. Okay, I'm going to do this fast, just in case we lose the connection. Monica has been in the early stages of labor for uh, several hours. No intense pain yet. Uh, the contractions are still irregular, but they're starting to get stronger. Is she bleeding? A little, but we're handling it. Now, we're getting set here for a natural childbirth, since we don't have any other choice. I think labor will go on for hours yet, because the baby's breech. All right, then maybe the snow clouds will be out there in an ambulance and get through to you. We'll make it top priority. Oh, yes, of course, that's our hope. Oh, and naturally, we're going to need an incubator. Gail and I are going to rig up kind of a homemade one here. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, blood pressure is uh, holding around uh, 120 over 82, and her heart is fine. Leslie, yeah. Alan's here now. He asked me earlier to tell you if I talked to you, and, and he didn't, that he feels that Monica has to come first. Rick, please tell him that I am determined to save both his wife and his son. Look, I'll put Alan on. Good Lord, Leslie, you can't let Monica die. You've got to promise me that. Alan, I... Leslie? Leslie, hello, are you there? I just barely made it. Operator, operator, please. Oh, it's no use. I've got to try it. Alan, would you let me try it for you? What am I going to do? Dana Hotchkiss, we've got to get her out to the house, Rick. We call Dana Hotchkiss. She's snowbound. We're going to have to rely on Leslie, and she is one fine doctor. Yes, you're right. With Gail backing her up, there won't be anything humanly possible that won't be done. But Leslie is confident that she can bring your wife and your son through. Alan, just try to relax. This isn't going to help Monica or the emergency situation here at the hospital. All right? Okay. Now, the next thing I think we should do is tell Steve about this. He can help expedite getting an ambulance out there to her. You're not going to die. We're going to save you and the baby. I have to, I have to say something. No, Monica, you. don't talk now. You just save your strength. You have to help us get this baby born. Yes. 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 Leslie, you've got to help us. You have to help Leslie, us. We Leslie. can't do it without you. It's all right. It's all right. It's, all right. it's okay. With the contraction. All right. You're doing just fine. Hold don't on push. To the breath. Don't push. What? Dear God. She fainted? Yeah. Oh, no. I mean it, Alan. You've done one heck of a job assisting me in these emergency surgeries. It's been a long time since I've had mask and gloves on. Well, that's what I'm talking about. The amount of time that you've been out of the operating theater, no one would know it because of the way you handle yourself. Thank you. I'm glad I could do it. You've been one great help to me. I've got to tell you the truth, though. It didn't take my mind off worrying about Monica. Oh, well, I would. Hey, you got two fine doctors out there with it. Thank God they're there. I don't know if Leslie and Gail hadn't gotten stuck in that storm. She'd have been out there alone with just...